So in this video today, I'm gonna to go over with you 10 pharmacology terms that you need to know when it comes to your pharmacology medical exams or your nursing exams. So stay tuned and watch this video until the very end. All right, so what we're gonna be going over today is I'm going to be sharing with you 10 pharmacology terms that you need to know. And this is so important, whether you are studying this because you're in nursing school and you need to pass pharmacology, or you're studying this because you're taking, you're trying to pass your NCLEX exam, your nursing exams, your exit exam, or your pharmacology, soon to be pharmacology tech or a medical doctor, whichever it may be. I'm going to go over with you 10 pharmacology terms that you would need to know. And depending on what your scope of practice, it will definitely give you some context to understanding the significance of each of these medications. So let's kind of go right into it. And I'm going to go ahead and also share the, each of the terms on the screen as I'm talking. So that way it can help you to better understand each of the terms. So the first one is going to be the cumulative effects of medications, cumulative effects of medications. What I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be reading from um, one of my books, which is called Our Pharmacology Cheat Sheet Guide. And so I'm going to be simply reading over, over it and helping you to better understand what's in the book so you can better understand you know, these pharmacology terms. So the first thing it says, cumulative effects of a medication so the cumulative effects are those effects that result from the accumulation of a medication. Cumulative effects of medications can occur as the result of several impaired pharmacokinetic processes, including the impaired biotransformation and excretion of drugs, as often as occurs among elderly clients because of some of the normal changes of the aging process. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break it up into layman's terms so it makes more sense. So essentially what you have to realize is that when we're giving a medication, um, when it's the first time that we're giving the medication, we're not concerned about cumulative effects, right? So this is referring to the accumulation of a medication over time in a patient's body. So when we're first giving it, the, our main concern is the side effects. But over time though, the, uh, or the potential initial side effects. But over time though, what can happen is that if that medication is taken on a regular or frequent basis, and the patient also has um, slow metabolism, such as what we see in elderly patients or patients that have some type of liver or kidney problems, then there, it's gonna be more likely to accumulate in the bloodstream which can result in those side effects. So a really common one that's not necessarily harmful would be taking opioids, um, like medications for pain, such as like Norco or Vicodin. When patients take that medication, initially it may not really cause them other issues aside from what it's supposed to do, which is help them to feel better and have no pain. But most of the time when patients are taking this medication on a regular basis, it will accumulate in their blood and they will report constipation. So that's a common side effect with this medication. And oftentimes you'll see in the hospital where we'll, we ask them, you know, the nurse will ask them, when was the last time that you had a bowel movement? And they will say things like, oh, a week ago or two weeks ago. I've had patients that told me a month ago, <laughs> you know, and they're not even alarmed at the, by that. So that's certainly what cumulative effects are. So you, what you have to be concerned about is, especially for patients that are elderly or patients that have issues with metabolism or excretion, they're gonna have a higher likelihood of cumulative effects and or patients that have just been taking the medication long-term. So being aware of those side effects is especially important, all right? So now let's move on to the next term. Okay, let's move on to the next term. So this one is going to be drug absorption, all right? Drug absorption. So let's talk about what drug absorption is. Drug, drug absorption is the pharmacokinetic process with which the medication moves through the body to the bloodstream. 
Because intravenous medications are delivered directly into the bloodstream, they are not absorbed. The rates for, of absorption for oral medications vary according to the acidity of the stomach's fluids, the presence of food, and other factors. So this is really huge. So sometimes I'll, I'll have people that will, you know, not quite understand, okay, why do I have to give this medication PO, but, I, but you know, why can't I also give this one IV or give this one sub-Q? And it's because of the drug absorption. So there's certain medications where if you give it and it's not intended to be given in that route, it's going to absorb too quickly and it can be associated with a high mortality risk. So for example, insulin is a common medication which is considered a high risk drug. So with drug absorption, this is why when we have patients that we, we give them like some type of medication through their mouth, we have to, we advise them and let them know the medication will take about half an hour to an hour before it fully works, right? And then when we give medications, like it was saying, through their IV, it's not necessarily being absorbed in their stomach. It's literally going straight to their bloodstream, so it's going to work within a matter of minutes. So drug absorption is very important, especially when it comes to understanding the routes of the medications and why we're giving it the way that we're giving it. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next one, which is going to be drug distribution. Drug distribution. So drug distribution is the second phase of the pharmacokinetic process. This is the movement of medication through the bloodstream to its target. Fat soluble, fat soluble medications are attracted to fatty tissue targets. So this is essentially how the medication moves through the body. So when somebody eats food, right, whatever it is that they eat, and now what happens, the body now goes through a digestive process, or which is essentially how food is broken down, and then the nutrients and the glucose eventually hits to the rest of the body, right? After it goes through the esophagus, then the stomach, then it goes into the small intestine, the large intestine, et cetera, right? So when it comes to drugs, it also goes through that same, same process, that same movement. So that's what this, this is referring to. This is essentially how the drug begins to be distributed throughout the body, all right? So this one, this one we're, we're not as concerned with unless a patient has a problem where maybe there's an issue in their digestive system, maybe they have a small, a small bowel obstruction, and as a result, they have problems with foods, foods or any drug passing through the normal way. So that could be an example where they would be on like an NG tube or they would be have like a G tube and that would go straight to their uh, small intestine, right? So just depending on where the, the, the tube is located, it will go straight into their, their system. So this is all about the movement of the drug, all right? So now let's go on to the next one, all right? And anytime, if it's going too fast, Feel free to stop the video, zoom in if, you, if that will help you. The next one is going to be drug metabolism. Drug metabolism. Let me make sure that's on the screen. Drug metabolism. So drug metabolism also refers to as a biotransformation and is the third phase of the pharmacokinetic process. Drug metabolism is defined as the detoxification and breaking down of drugs in the liver. Okay, so this is all about pretty much the medication being broken down in the patient's liver process, right, in their liver. And so with, this is also something that we would be concerned about more if the patient had some type of liver dysfunction or some type of liver problems or as well patients that have renal dysfunction or a, acute renal or chronic renal failure issues. Because what that means is that it, what was, what's supposed to happen is that when somebody takes a medication, the medication is going to go through the system, right? And it's going to absorb in their body, right? And they're going to feel the effects of the medications, which is what we want to happen. And then it will be broken down and eventually leave the body 
you know, and be metabolized to the liver. But if somebody has a problem with their liver function or and or they have a problem with their kidneys, such as elderly patients or just patients with kidney problems in general, then instead of that drug being metabolized quickly, it's going to instead retain in the body. And if we keep giving the drug, it's going to have a high quantity in their bloodstream. This is why when you have patients that have um, medications like antibiotics, like vancomycin, and it really is significant to pay attention to if the drug is being given every 12 hours or every eight hours or every 24 hours, right? So depending on how old the patient is or the medical history, it can be a concern. That's why we typically need to check um, to see what the vanco level is, for example, with vancomycin, prior to the third dose to make sure that the amount in their system is not too high and their body is actually metabolizing the medication at a proper rate, right? So this is, this is why drug metabolism matters. So it matters essentially with patients with liver problems, elderly patients or patients with kidney problems, so you, if they have any of these issues, then we need to evaluate the frequency and the quantity of the medication, all right? So hopefully that is helpful. Now let's go on to the next medication or the next term I should say, which is gonna be drug allergy, drug allergy. So one of the first things that we ask patients as soon as they come to the hospital is, do you have any allergies? Do you have any medical allergies, right? And it really also helps us to know the severity of the allergy so that we were aware like what could potentially happen if the patient was to consume that drug or a drug that is similar um, to that medication. So drug allergy is pretty much the result of an antigen or antibody immunologic response to a medication. All clients must be assessed for any drug sensitivities and allergies, all right? So this is very simple, making sure that we know this information so that way the patient does not receive a medication that could be potentially harmful to them. Okay. So now the next one is gonna be drug interactions. Drug interactions. So drug interactions occurs when drugs and foods interact when drugs and herbs or supplements interact, and when drugs and other drugs also interact. Some of these drugs interact are synergistic, which is meaning that they help, they support each other, and then, and potentially, right? Which it, so it helps to further achieve that therapeutic effect. And others may be inhibiting, meaning that they work against one another. So one thing that you, that we should be aware of. Like it said, it's drugs that interact with food, drugs that interact with herbs, and drugs that interact with other drugs. So, you know, when you have patients uh, and when they're on medications, especially if the patient is um, confused or they're just not as aware or they're elderly, oftentimes you have to be careful about the medications that you're giving simultaneously. So there's some medications where you can't give this and give this at the same time because it will cause it will negate each of the each of the drugs or it will make it work too well. Right? And then there's also some type of drugs with herbs that you can't give that will also make it a problem as well. So I, I believe I want to say if you give, for example, let's say you have a patient that's on warfarin, and I want to say I want to say it's ginkgo biloba, which is a supplement that's commonly taken by by a lot of people. It will increase and it can worsen the bleeding effect, right? So certain things like that. Or if the patient is on coumadin, but they're also and they need to be on the coumadin because they have atrial fibrillation, for example, but they they share with you how many green leafy vegetables that they eat, how much broccoli they take every day, right? So that would be 
uh, that would be bad because if they're supposed to take the warfarin to prevent them from having like a claw, a stroke because of the AFib, and they're taking lots of green leafy vegetables, oh, that's going to be a problem. And it's going to cause the warfarin not to work. And it's going to increase the likelihood of them having a stroke. So this is so this is why this is important when it comes to drug interactions. Ask the patient prior to administering the drugs, what other medications are you taking at home? Um, another, a really good common one as well, is if you're going to give a patient nitroglycerin, all right? So for example, patients, let's say you have a patient and they're complaining of chest pain, right? So one of the common medications that we'll give for chest pain is nitroglycerin, right? We're going to give it, it's, it's, very, it's a very tiny pill, and they're going to put it usually under the tongue and let it sit there for about five minutes until we have to give another dose if the pain is not relieved. However, though, you do need to ask because if the patient is also currently taking sildenafil, right? Sildenafil is also is the generic name for the original drug, which is called Viagra. So if the patient is taking Viagra and they took it usually within the past 24 to 48 hours and you give them nitro, it will cause their blood pressure to tank and to drop suddenly. And so now you have to give them a bunch of fluids, which is which would be terribly unnecessary. So this is one of the things too, this is an example of a, of a drug and drug interacting and pretty much causing a, a detrimental, harmful effect to the patient. So being aware of all the drugs that they're on is one reason why it's so important. All right, the next one now, now is going on to drug intolerance, all right, or I should say drug tolerance, right? So drug tolerance occurs when a client has been receiving a particular medication, such as an opioid drug, for a prolonged period of time, and as a result of this prolonged administration, the client needs are increasing the dosage of the medication to produce the therapeutic effect. So what this means is that, let's say you start the patient on, and at the beginning of month one, right, they're taking mm, one pill of Norco, right? And they take that amount of Norco every single day for a month right? But then now, two months later, they're saying like, oh, the pain is, is it's coming back, even though they're taking the medication. So now that means that they have developed a tolerance to the medication, and essentially they need a higher amount of medication in order to treat the pain or the problem that they have. So that's essentially what drug tolerance means, where their body has now gotten used to that quantity in their system, and unfortunately, they need a higher dose just to resolve the problem, um, which is of, of the cause that they need the drug in the first place. All right. Now let's go on to the next one. Right? So, and if you find this helpful, make sure you go ahead and hit the like, follow, and subscribe button. And let me know in the comments what you took away from today's video. So the next one is going to be drug toxicity. All right. Drug toxicity. So drug toxicity is defined as the overdosage of a medication that occurs when the dose that is administered exceeds the client's ability to metabolize and or excrete the medication. So this is what I was talking about earlier, what I was saying about vancomycin and the reason why it's important to know the frequency and the amount the patient is taking along with if they're elderly or if they have liver or kidney problems because they're gonna be at risk for uh, overdose or toxicity. And so drug toxicity means now that they've already achieved that. So now it means that their body has too much of the drug in their body. A common example of this that you probably will see on your nursing exams is digoxin toxicity, all right? Digoxin toxicity or digoxin toxicalis and this is essentially where one of the common symptoms that they'll see is like halos, right, around lights. So they have halos, they feel nauseous, they may also throw up as well, and they may also feel dizzy, right? So that's the toxicity, where what has happened now is that 
there's too much of the med in their body, even if they were getting the normal quantity, their body has not been able to metabolize it or excrete it fast enough. And now they're experiencing those signs and symptoms. So that is the Jackson toxicity. Okay. Or actually, and which is overall drug toxicity. All right. The next one now is going to be pharmacodynamics. All right. Pharmacodynamics. So let me go over with you what pharmacodynamics. Oh, sorry, hold on, let me show this right here. Let me go over with you what pharmacodynamics looks like. Pharmacodynamics is pretty much what we've been talking about so far, right? It's pretty much all of these elements I just shared with you guys today. This refers to the actions of the medications in the body. So this is drug concentrations, receptor and binding activities, antagonistic actions, and the agonist actions are pharmacodynamics principles. Pharmacokinetics is the absorption distribution. Oh, I'm sorry. I went too fast. So pharmacodynamics, that's what pharmacodynamics is, y'all. It's essentially describing what are the actions that occurs with, when the medication receives or, or enters into the body, right? So this is the, the concentration, the receptor and binding activity, the antagonist actions, and the agonist actions are pharmacodynamic principles. So this is just in layman's terms, it's just describing how does the medication um, affect the body at the molecular level, right? So if you took microbiology, then you'll understand better what I'm what I'm talking about right now as far as this context. But that's what this is referring to. It's 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 really talking about what is happening at the molecular level of the medication. All right, and the last one now is going to be pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics. So the so the word kinetic at the end, the word kinetic, that's all about movement, right? So this one now means pharmacokinetics is the absorption, the distribution, the metabolism, and the excretion of drugs, right? The absorption, the distribution, the metabolism and the excretion of drugs, all right? So that's actually what this is describing um, when it comes to pharmacokinetics. Each of those these terms I just went over with you guys now, it will definitely benefit you to make sure that you really listen to it repeatedly. If you really you know, need to, under, if you don't really understand it very well, write it down, create flashcards, um, the reason why it's so important is because it will lay the foundation so you really understand pharmacology and you really understand medications. Without knowing these terms, it's going to be easy to be very forgetful when it comes to these terms. All right. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like, follow, and subscribe button below and let me know that you found it helpful. Also, as well, if you are watching this video and you found all this information helpful and you want to have the information at your fingertips you can also go click below this video let me show you right now and you can get this book right here this one that i just was reading from this is our pharmacology cheat sheet book and so you can simply click below all the information is seen um, in the comments all right so you can see it in the description below um and then if you are currently um, trying to pass your medical, your nursing exam, you're trying to pass your NCLEX test, go ahead and click below and watch my free training as well. So in my free training, this is essentially a training where I really help you to better understand how to, you know, really understand um, how to pass your NCLEX exam specifically. So if you want me to show you, you know, step by step, the best way to take and pass NCLEX exam, then go ahead and click below this video or go to the website free training that nursing.net where I will show you how to take and pass your NCLEX exam. All right. So that's it. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for like, sharing, and following. And I'll see you the next time.